Hello, mamas. Uh, it's Althea, your feng shui coach, back with you today talking about the water element personality and clutter. So today I just want to talk a little more about the strengths of the water personality. So water people are very um, very resourceful. Think of that quality of water, its ability to to fall through any cracks. So, you know, it has the ability to move through any situation and get through it with lots of resourcefulness. Um, so, so water people can be really good at facing challenges and they tend to be very deep thinkers. Um, they love to be kind of anonymous and they love to go inward and um, they love, they have this strong ability to link the past with the present. So they make incredible historians, you know, because they're always looking at what's going on in the past to, to provide insights, deep insights to, to our culture as a whole for, you know, patterns and um, how we can move forward in life. And, you know, that's, that water element is connected to one's path in life. So it's really about, you know, honoring the past, understanding the path and making the connections to how we can shift things in the future. So, um, you know, water people, they're very good at chilling, at just lounging and reading, and they're very, very connected to their ideas and they're great philosophers and so when water people um, move out of balance you might find this this um, over commitment to ideas or this very strong commitment to ideas to the point where you know maybe they're they're collecting all of these books and papers and newspapers and so these ideas are so valuable to them that it shows up in the space with just piles of books or just piles of, of various kinds of of knowledge and to the water person um when they become out of balance it's almost like these ideas are more important than anything else and it's it's like it's they, they don't want to water people don't want to be bothered with stuff or worrying about stuff so it, it could also even be that the books um they pile up but other things pile up i can give an example of my brother who's who's definitely a water person and he can he can even talk you know he, he has this ability to to almost be invisible but when you actually speak to him he can talk about ideas forever for hours and and go on and on and on to the point that other things kind of just are left to the wayside <laughs> like growing up he we'd have like he'd have like pizza under his bed or you know like he'd be so immersed in his ideas that everything else kind of just gets left behind and luckily he's married to somebody who has a lot of metal and she she manages the home and it's this immaculate pristine looking home um so in some ways maybe you know she helps the, <laughs> helps keep things in balance within the home but that's where it becomes a challenge for the the water person is when they get so kind of so immersed and so um, lost in the ideas or connected to their ideas that they kind of lose sense of of even the surroundings, like what's around them. And they almost see, you know, dealing with the clutter of, of the papers and the books as, as not relevant. Like this just doesn't really matter. Um, so, and this kind of clutter has been called flooding by, by professionals by organizers so it's interesting that um, it's connected to the water element and so for the the water person that is is 
somewhat aware that this is creating an issue for them. Like this is only gonna uh, be dealt with when the water person actually feels like this is an issue or or a feng shui practitioner would might come into the home and see that maybe this is just taking over other areas of the life. Like you have kids and you find that you're you know, your stuff, your books is just kind of getting in the way of everybody's path to even to walk around their home, right? So it really is something that is to take very sensitively because we don't want to say that the water person's needs to, to hold on to these ideas is not valuable because for them, there's, there's gems of knowledge in all, in all of these books and and all of these papers all of these magazines there's there's like their little pockets of information that somehow they the water person will will always know where to find it right so the water person might actually need to call up on help from from somebody who has more of that metal element they might need a professional organizer they might need the feng shui practitioner to come in and sensitively um, help them to find ways to to naturally shift this out of balance water yeah. element right so we can't always force these things to to take place um, sometimes it's okay to recognize that you need some support if you have this very strong water quality and that's okay right it's it's when you ring the bell and you say hey okay I see that this is an issue for me and I do think I need some help in this area so that's when we want to ring the bell and and get some help um, one feng shui adjustment uh, for the water person could be to get what's called a sun moon mirror um, which is basically a mirror that has been exposed uh, to sunlight for 24 hours on one side and then exposed to moonlight for 24 hours on the other side. And it's a great um, form of reflecting upon oneself and what one needs to bring balance to in their lives. And so you would get this sun moon mirror and you would place it underneath your pillow and you would keep it there for 27 days to help help you to bring awareness to this um, this water out of balance quality and that could be one way of more gently or indirectly uh, adjusting the water that's out of balance so so that's like something that you could go out and, and search for sun moon mirrors and they've been blessed and you do this with intention so you can do that you can hire a professional organizer or or find your person find your metal person you know if you know somebody who's really um really well organized you know you can ask for help um or you could hire a feng shui practitioner to to come in and sens sensitively uh, work with this issue. Um, a third thing you could do is also to adjust the water of stillness is to bring, uh, to put a bowl of water under your bed and change that water every day for 27 days. If you don't want to go out and get a sun moon mirror, you can, you can bring in the element of water and sleep, have, you know, sleep, uh, sleep above it and that can be a way of you know acknowledging the stillness of water and allowing it to um, bring more balance to an out of, out of balance water person um, so I'd say that's that's it for now um, but I want to end by saying you know we want to celebrate the water people and their ability to capture um, to capture knowledge, it's knowledge nuggets, and uh, create meaning from from all of all of the knowledge that you know we we seek to create connections from the past and bring those connections to the future. You are tremendously valuable people, and um, you know I hope that if this is an issue for you, uh, you you find your way 
to bring water back to balance and have a beautiful day.